going to church on Easter and Christmas. How come you're not blessing me? It's all about having it my way, people. It's all about my way. This is not Burger King. <laughs> it's about doing it his way. And you may be putting your expectation that God would do all these things for you on your timetable, your way. And you're disappointed because God hasn't hooked you up the way you think you should be hooked up. The way you think you deserve to be blessed. Your expectation is way off. God's ways are not your ways. As high as the heavens are above the sky, so are God's thoughts above your thoughts. You got to get your mind off you. This ain't about you. John, let's turn to John chapter 10. You're in Luke. Right after that is John. Just a few pages. John 10, 10. It says, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. Everyone say steal, kill, destroy. This thief is the devil, and he wants to come and kill, steal, kill, and destroy your opportunity to have a powerful relationship with God. He will tell you whatever is effective. He will give you whatever is necessary to get you distracted from trusting in God. He will get, tell you whatever you need to hear to not believe the Bible. He will tell you whatever you want to have and give you whatever you want to have to distract you from reading your Bible, going to church, serving God. Anything he can give you to get you away from God, that's what he'll do. Then it says, I, Jesus says, I have come that may have life and that have it, you may have it more abundantly. Everyone say abundant life. Abundant what God has come to give you is abundant life. The, abundant, the Greek word is pedosos. It means over and above life. Say over and above. Say exceedingly abundant. Take a deep breath in. Say extraordinary. Very good. Say uncommon. Say life with an advantage. Two more. Say remarkable. Say excellent. God has come to give you a remarkable, excellent life. An over an abundance amount of patience with people who irritate you. An uncommon amount of forgiveness. An excellent perspective on who and what you are. And he's come to give you all of that outside of things. In other words, there are some people with a lot of things and a little bit of happiness. Then there's other people with a whole lot of happiness and a little bit of things. And I know what you're thinking. Can I have a lot of things and a lot of happiness? <laughs> yeah, you can. But let me tell you, the only reason, say only, only, the only reason you want things is because you are convinced those things will give you happiness. It's the only reason you want them. Not because they're good in and of themselves, but you think they're going to give you happiness. You need to get your happiness from God. If you believe that a clunker would make you happy, a clunker is either a really jacked up car or a really jacked up boyfriend, however you want to look at it, <laughs> or a girlfriend for that matter. But it's a, a messed up girlfriend, I should say. A clunker is where you drive and clunk, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and sometimes our cars work like that way and sometimes the people are like that, right? If you believe that a clunker would make you happy, you would go buy one. The only reason you don't buy it is because you don't think it will make you happy. The point is, is that you think things are going to make you happy when Jesus is saying, I am the one that wants to make you happy. My, my wife, we met on a, um, at a party. It's a Friday, Saturday night. I can't remember what day of the week it was, but it was exactly a week later that I went over to her apartment for our first date. I had a football game that afternoon, a few hours away from school where we went, and I said, I'll be back at 8 o'clock. I called her up at 8 o'clock, and I said, I'm going to call you right at 8 o'clock. Got to the gym, called her at 8 o'clock, said, I'm going to come over. I had four interceptions and a 56-yard punt return in that game, which is, if you don't know anything about football, that's, like, ridiculous. So when I called her up, she said, did you have a good game? And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, uh, I had four interceptions and a 56-yard punt return. And she went, is that good? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> guess I have to use a different angle with this girl, <laughs> the educator. So anyway, I went over to her apartment. <laughs> I don't, we didn't watch any TV. There was no blockbuster movies. We went for a walk under the moonlight. 
โอ้ A possum came out, and I protected her. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> big old possum, like this big and waddle there. And I was like, "I will protect you, woman. Run, because I'm right behind you." <laughs> true story. True story. So when, whenever we reminisce about our life, we never talk about things. It's always about time together. We always talk about that walk, because it was only the second time I had seen her, and we were just getting to know each other, walking. And it was a summer night, late summer night, September, nice and warm, just spending time. Do you remember being in love? Where all you wanted to do was sit with this person. It didn't matter where you were. It didn't matter what you were doing. You just wanted to be with that person. The first time I fell in love, I was 10 years old. I had these two girls that were cousins that were my girlfriends, and I thought my whole life. It was messed up, but it, but it was great. <laughs> but nothing mattered. My point is this: is that when you when you have a relationship with God and you are in love with God and God is in love with you and you experience, by the way, when you experience the love of God in your life, and He gives you His perspective on you, and He speaks to you and He encourages you, all the other stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's bonus. It's bonus. When my wife and I go on vacation, which we've committed to like six years ago, to every year go on vacation together, we didn't do that for so many years. And you know what we do on our vacation? Absolutely nothing. We do nothing. Uh, well, not really nothing, nothing, but we we spend all day, pretty much, sitting on a beach, sitting at the pool, just driving around. What do you want to do? Nothing. I don't sit in Starbucks. We go sit in Starbucks, and I just sit there, act like I'm drinking coffee. I got a little cup. I don't know what's in it, and, and, and just sit there and just. But really, we're not doing nothing. We're spending time together. My point is this: is that when God gives you an abundant life, and you spend time with God, all that other stuff you're chasing after doesn't mean anything. When you don't have God, you end up spending so much time tracing this other stuff, and you get addicted to those things, so you can fill a hole that only God can fill. What you need to put your hope in is what God said He wants to give you. Now, I have a theory and an opinion, and my opinion means what? And here's my opinion: <laughs> is that God is going to give you so much life, not only in this earth but in the earth to come, that it requires eternity. For you to enjoy it, he's given you so much opportunity to love him, and there's so much of him to get to know. It's going to require eternity. That's what he wants to give you, and he wants to start today. So, how do you do that? Turn to John chapter eight. You're in John. Turn to John chapter eight, verse thirty-one. Jesus said, "If you abide in my word." And you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you abide in my word, if you want to experience the abundant life God has for you, trust His word. If Jesus rose from the dead, there was nothing He can't do. If He died for you because He loves you, there's nothing He won't do. So the only thing for you to do is trust Him. Obey his word. That's it. Let's keep reading. Look what it says in verse 33. The Jews answered and said, "We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been in bondage. So how can you say we will be free?" And Jesus said, "Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave to sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but is a, but is but is a son, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed." He said, "Listen, you are a sinner, and if you are a sinner, you are a slave to sin. What does that mean? Is that you cannot." Free yourself from sinning on your own, and you cannot free yourself from the penalty of sin on your own. But if you trust me, I will set you free. If you trust me, I will set you free, and you shall be free indeed. You shall be free to love me. You shall be free to obey me. You shall be free to follow me, love others, be patient more than you can be patient on your own. All the stuff that I created you to be and do, you'll be free to do. I will set you free. Turn to 